Hi guys and welcome to today's video on rules for linear growth and decay, part of this further math series of videos. Awesome to see you, thank you very much. Now you're obviously here to find out about linear growth and decay, which is a continuation of a series of videos I'm already working on. We're going to go to financial maths, we're going to have so much fun, it is too much. I'm Darren, otherwise known as the Maths Guru, and if you haven't already done so, can you do me a favour? And in that corner over there, there is an arrow pointing to a subscribe button, which basically is subscribe you to my YouTube channel. If you can, greatly appreciated. Now, in a recap, which is what I do very well in previously, we've been looking at sequences and how they're formed, right? So the first lesson was about sequences. Then we moved on to recurrence relationships with regards to, well, how do they describe sequences? Can we formally write to them? And we looked at the idea of simple interest and loans and investments, and we looked at depreciation, both flat rate and unit cost. And basically, we found that there was sort of um, a link. There was uh, pretty much the same formula. So if we look here, I'm making my screen just a little bit smaller so it all fits on. What do we notice? We notice that simple interest was given by V0 is the principal, yeah? So when we have interest, we're actually adding money on. So the great thing there is I go to the bank and I give them some money, yay, and they give me money back to say sort of thank you. Um, and what we did was we decided that that plus D allowed us to say that we were adding money on. We were getting more and more and more. And how do we work out that value of D? Well, because we're dealing with simple interest, we're dealing with some sort of rate from the bank, we calculated that D to be R on 100 times V0. And what was V0? Well, of course, it was my principal. And then we said, well, hold on a moment. When we were depreciating, it seemed to be the same formula. Although in this situation, because depreciation means going down, we actually changed the plus to a minus. Exactly the same formula for that D, R over 100 times V0. But this gave me some sort of linear growth or linear decay. It went up in the same amount each month, or it went down by the same amount each month. Now, the problem is, to be able to do this, to use this formula that says V0 is equal to 30, and V of N plus one is V of N plus 20, for example, for that formula there, I have to keep doing month on month on month. So I'd start with 30, and then it says here, well, to get to the next month, add 20, so then I'd go 50, and then I'd add, that would be 70, and then 90, and then 110, and so we would go on. But it seems a bit bizarre, really, to have to keep doing that. I mean, what if I wanted to find out how much money I had after 60 months? Am I literally gonna sit there and go, oh, write out all of those 60 values? There must be a simpler way, mustn't there? And actually, that's what this video is all about here. And sort of the hint there was that I'm adding $20 every single month. So let's have a look at this question here. I've invested $2,000 in a simple interest investment paying 5% per annum. How much will I have at the end of five years? Okay, so the first thing you know is that V0 is now $2,000. And we know that to get to V of N plus 1, I'm going to do V of N plus my value of D. Now, why am I adding it on? Because it's simple interest, and interest always gets added on. And we know that D was given by uh, R on 100 times V0. So what is my R rate? It was 5 on 100, sorry, times. If I said plus, I meant times the value of Z, uh, V0, which is 2,000. How am I going to do that? load up my CAS calculator, and let's see what we get. 5 divided by 100 equals, and times up by 2123, gives me a grand total of $100. So I now know that my D value is $100. Yay! So how much will I have at the end of five years? Well, the first year I've got, or I started with $2,000, that was V0. At the end of the first year, I'm going to have 2,000 plus 100, which gives me 2,100. The end of the second year, I'll have 2,000, whoops, hold on a moment. I'll have 2,100 plus 100, which is 2,200. And V3, I get 2,200 plus 100 equals 2,300. Now I'm bored, so I'm going to fire up my calculator and let's see what happens. So there's 2,000, there's my initial investment. I'm going to answer 100, one first year, second year, third year fourth year and fifth year, 2,500. But do you notice what's happened? How many years were there? Five. How many times did I add on $100? Five. So actually, I could have made this much simpler for myself by doing 2,000 plus five times 
$100. Because that's what I was doing. I was just adding $100 on five times. And yay, believe it or not, that is the easy way of doing this stuff. When we're doing linear growth or linear decay, then actually the formula can slightly change. And do you see what I mean here? See what I hear? See? See, I can't talk properly. So first things first, we have V0 is my initial value. Initial value principle, exactly the same thing. But what do we notice about my formula? It now becomes that V of N is equal to V0 plus N times D. Now, whoa, whoa, hold on a moment. This used to be Vn plus one is equal to Vn plus D. How have we changed it? Well, remember the N plus one is to say to get to my next number in the list. And this was my current number in the list, but we're not doing it that way anymore. What we're now saying is, if I wanted to get to V5, for example, I would take my initial amount and add five times D. Now you're gonna say, whoa, why did you get that five from? Would you notice the little N here was changed to a five? Well, there's no real coincidence that that N changed to a five as well. So N being five tells me, well, hold on a moment, take my initial amount, and add five times whatever my simple interest payment was. And to go back to that example I did a moment ago, if you remember, what was my V0? My V0 was 2000, and I knew that my D was 100, and then I multiplied that by five, and that gave me the 2500. This stuff is amazing. So simple interest, slight change to my formula, but oh, it's gonna make life so much easier for me. What about flat rate depreciation? Well, remember, depreciation means we're going down. So we're subtracting money from my original payment or my investment or whatever else. And so what do we notice? We notice here that it's minus n times d. Once again, v of n is equal to v0 minus n times d. n is the number of payments you're doing. d is that payment. So again, for example, if I knew that v0 was in this situation 2000, and I was taking out money, say every month I wanted an $100 allowance, then I would know that D would equal to 100. Because I'm taking money away, I'm subtracting that money, let's see how much I'd have after, say, 10 months. Well, we would know that V10, which is 10 months, is V0, my initial, month, uh, my initial amount, take away 10 times however much I'm doing. Well, I know then that V10 was my initial amount was 2,000, minus 1,000, which means at the end of those 10 months, I'd have only $1,000 left in my account or my investment or whatever it is. <sighs> Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And so we'll zoom on to examples extracted from the Cambridge Further Maths Units 3 and 4 textbook series. Thank you, Cambridge, for allowing me to use your examples. You guys are awesome. So let's see example one. The following recurrence relation, we don't care what that means now, we're very happy, can be used to model a simple interest investment. Now, there is a trick here. It's a recurrence relationship, which basically means that it's going from term to term to term. We don't want to get tricked by this. V0 equals 3,000. Okay, so thank you very much, 3,000. That's how much I'm starting with. And to get to my next term, good to notice, n plus 1, take my previous term and add 260. Right, okay. So, A, part A, what is the principle of the investment? How much do I effectively open with? Well, here is part A. We know that V0 is my principle. And so that would be equal to 3. Thousand dollars. One mark. Thank you very much. How much interest it added is uh, sorry. How much interest is added to the investment each year? Well, remember when we have things in the term of v of n plus one is v of n plus d. This is the interest or whatever's being added. And because my formula is in that format with the next term plus, it's two hundred and sixty dollars. So I now know that my interest being added is equal to two hundred. And sixty dollars. This who says maths is challenging. <laughs> Part B. White, white. Write down the rule for the value of the investment after n years. Now this is the important one. This is the language you need to look for. When it says after n years, it now wants you to put it into the format of v of n is equal v zero plus n times d. So this now means in after n years. After n years, that's what you formula is. So the first thing I'm going to do is say V of m is equal to, do I know my value of V0? Yes, we've actually got that previously. We just found that. Is equal to 3,000 plus n, we don't know what n is because we're on a general formula here, 
times D, which is this incremental, how much is my account going up every single year or every single month? And we work that out to be 260. Now, generally speaking, we always write numbers before letters. So in that situation, we would probably be expecting to write 3000 plus 260N. Oh, loving this question, part C. Use our rule, this is the rule, to find the value of the investment after 15 years. Wow, what value, what letter do you think they're telling you there? Well, hopefully the letter N. Yes, they're telling me now 15 years. So for part C, they're saying find V of 15. Do you notice what I'm changing? The N has now become 15. And so what am I gonna do with my formula? I'm gonna do 3000 plus 260 times 15. Now, I don't know about you, I cannot do that in my head. So I'm gonna use my CAS for 3000 plus Two, oh, no, 260 times 15. Please calculate it. Give me $6,900. $6,900. Use a rule to find when the value of the investment first exceeds one, what's that, $10,000. So I'm going to do it over here and give myself a bit of space. So once again, we've got V of M is equal to, what did we say, 3,000 plus 260 times n. Now they're trying to trick us. Math is a huge trick. If you can work out what numbers to put into the formulas, you are laughing. What they're now telling me is we've actually got the final amount. We've got this $10,000. So what they're actually giving you there is V of m. So it's $10,000 is equal to 3,000 plus 260, but we don't know the number of years. We're trying to find the number of years. Well, how do I do this now? Lots of different ways using my CAS calculator. I can bring up my CAS, I can say solve, and let's put that in 3123, no, 3123, plus 260 times by, well, I'm gonna use X, I'm not gonna use N, uh, is equal to 10123, comma X, and close the brackets and hit enter. So putting that into my CAS and solving it, I get 26.92. Now, generally speaking, we're not gonna put our value in 26.92. We're gonna try and come up with a sensible value here. And the most sensible value here is 27 years, not 26. If I did 26 years, I wouldn't actually have quite got to the 10,000. So my value of N in this situation would be 27 years. Wow, this stuff's awesome. Is there another example? Of course there is. There is, in fact, two more examples. Amy invests $3,000 in a simple interest investment of paying interest at the rate of 6.5% per year. That interest is going to be really important. That is my initial value. Use a rule to find the value of the investment after 10 years. Right, first thing we need to do for this question is write down that V0 is 3,000. And remember that my formula is V of M is equal to V0 plus N times D. Now, do we know the value of N here? Yes, because it's telling me after 10 years. So I know that N is equal to 10. The one thing I don't know, apparently, is this value of D. But that's okay, because we know that D is given by R on 100 times V0. So do we know the rate of interest? We do 6.5 over 100 times V0, which is 3 thousand dollars firing up more cads he says with a very poor australian accent my humble apologies is 6.5 divided by 100 equals and then times that by three one two three gives me the staggering value of not that math guru actually do what you want it to so let's copy that down and we're going to times that by three one two three my calculator is obviously having a slow day 195 dollars 100 and 95. Okay, so that's my value of D. So there is my value of D is 195. So I can say that V10, the value of my investment after 10 years is given by V0, 3, 1, 2, 3, plus N, which is 10, times 195. Now, CAS calculator, will you do me the honor, please, of being nice and telling me 3,000 plus 10 times 195, it gives me $4,950, $4,950, there we go. Oh, Amy's gonna be loaded. Final example, example three, the following recurrence relation can be used to model the flat rate depreciation of a set of office furniture. Flat rate depreciation. So the most important word here is depreciation because it means we're gonna take away. Just check that a formula has a takeaway. And oh, there we go, lo and behold, my formula has that takeaway. Right, 
where Vn is the value of the furniture after n years. What a? That seems very similar to that first question, doesn't it? Very formulaic. What is the initial value of the furniture? Well, we know that, thank you very much. You've actually written that for me as $12,000. By how much does the furniture decrease in value each year? Or well, nice and easy, thank you very much. My D value is 1,200. Right, A done. Write down a rule for the value of the investment after N years. Again, like we did with that previous example, part B is looking for us to write V of M is equal to V of zero minus, because it's depreciation, N times D. So let's do this properly now by putting the values in. V zero is 12,000 minus n, we don't know, but we do know that d is 1200. And because we always write numbers first, when the two things are stuck together, we do 12, one, two, three, minus 1200 n. So there we go. That will now give me the value after any number of years by just changing that value of n. Okay, use a rule to find out the value of the investment after six years. How did I know that was coming? So we now know that v of six, because they want six years, they're saying that the n value be six, is equal to 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, what? minus 1, 2, 0, 0, times the value of 6. Once again, not going to try and do this in my head. 12, 1, 2, 3, minus 2, uh, 1, 2, 0, 0, times by 6, gives me the staggering value of $4,800. $4,800, that is the value of my furniture after six years. How long does it take for the furniture's value to decrease to zero? Loads of different ways you can do this, but... Let's actually do it with my calculator. So we've got 12, 1, 2, 3. So that's how much I'm starting with. And I am taking away $1,200 per year. All right, so that's how much it's going to sort of depreciate by. So 1, 2, 3. Come on, calculator. 4, 5. Wow, this is slow. 6, 7. Eight, nine, ten years. Okay, so ten years. After ten years, this thing will depreciate to a value of zero. And again, I'm really sorry about my calculator. I know why it's going so slow today. Probably because it's linked up to my computer. Uh, e, part E. There's a party. E. A photocopier in the office costs $6,000 when new. It value, sorry, its value depreciates at the flat rate of 17.5%, what is it value after four years? So now it's just putting all of that in one thing. So the first thing we need to do is come up with my V of N is equal to V zero minus N times D, because again, it's depreciating, so the value is going down. So V of N is equal to, we know what V zero is, it was $6,000 when new, minus N, we don't really know that at the moment, but I need to find my value of D. How do we do that? We know that it's R, over 100 times the value of V0. So R is 17.5 divided by 100 times 6,000. Hello, CAS calculator. Will you do that for me? Yes, so R was 17.5 divided by 100 equals, and then times that by, what do we times that by, did I say? 6,000, which gives me 1050. 1050 per year. $1050. So there we go. So V of N is equal to 6,000 minus 1050 times N. What is my value of N? It says in the question four years. So V4 is 6,000 minus 1050 times four, which gives me, come on calculator, you can do this for me, 6,000 minus 1050 times by four gives me the staggering value of $1,800. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that is how to do linear growth and decay using uh, one basic formula, a slight change to that formula, right? Not V of N plus one equals V of N plus or minus D, it's V of N equals V zero plus or minus N times D. Thank you so much for taking the time and watching. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully this has made sense to you. There are lots more videos coming. I'm about to record at least another six or seven now. So please, if you can do, over there is a doohickey for you to click and subscribe if you would. Uh, otherwise, there's a video loading below. Thank you so much for taking the time and watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. This is Mass Guru signing out. Bye-bye.